I'd like to welcome Stephen Ingalls, who many of you may have seen on orientation day, our principal. Thanks, Stephen. Oh, look, pictures and everything. Um, firstly, welcome to new students and returning students, and I would suspect the vast majority of you are new to Martin Senior College, uh, so you're all in the same position. Um, I have a few things to say, but it won't be um, overly lengthy. I just want to point out the many reasons you've all chosen to attend Martin Senior College, and in talking to uh, you people and the stage two people, very impressed by your reasoning, because it's a big decision, you've made a decision to come to a different institution, whether it be from school or not from school, made a big decision but a really bold decision, you've taken the initiative and a lot of you have got serious plans for where you want things to go and that's fantastic, so I just want to point out, acknowledge that is a, a really very, very good start and um, I appreciate that uh, that has taken some thinking to this point, um, so I'm very impressed by those motivations. Um, the point is, no one actually has to be here. It's a school of choice, so it's not like I have to go to this school or whatever. So we're all in that same position, although I suppose the staff have to be here if they wish to be employed. We could be somewhere else. <laughs> um, and uh, it is a great place, which we are truly proud of. Um, and I'll just point out three reasons why, before I get into some more detail. Um, firstly, it's about a strong learning culture. That's the purpose of what we're here for this learning culture. It's all about successful outcomes for you people. Um, secondly, it's about our safe and supportive environment. It's another real important part of our success and why what we can offer to you people and what you're now part of. And thirdly, our open and respectful communications with each other. And that's way more than just calling the teacher by the first name. It's about how we go about every one of those interactions. Um, which is not always positive and pleasant, but uh, not always pleasant. You know, we have to have some of the harder conversations, but, um, but they certainly, that respect has to shine through, and it does shine through. Um, as a whole college, around about 60 to 70 percent are new people each year. So it's certainly a fresh start for everybody, and um, the fact, matter of fact, it works. You'll notice today we have that bread area there on, uh, and, and some things to take for free. Other days there's lots of other students here who are from other schools, in other words a home school from another school. Anyone here from whose home school is not Martin who comes from another school for a class or so? So in, in some of your classes you'll have students who come just for one class. Tonight we'll have um, uh, two, three hundred students here from other schools largely or from our school coming to evening classes. You'll notice different people on Tuesdays and Thursdays who come and do certificate courses and the like. Welcome folks. So, as a student, as, as after an introduction, as a student, um, it's all about you developing and using your independence. So you are now made a decision, you use your initiative to this point, now it's about following that through. And a lot of it is making the most of opportunities, is to do with making wise choices. Speaking of choices, if you can just go to the next slide, Mandy. Um, at some stage, and this is lots of words and the likes, but I'll just point out a few things. You'll see this in some form pinned up in, um, in classrooms. What it really is is a summary, or more so, it's like an agreement. Some schools might have school rules and the likes. Well, that's far from our focus. Our focus is on learning and how we're going to be successful together. This captures really what you can expect and what can be expected of you. Um, in the process. So, um, for example, this purposeful adult learning environment is something that I've been, um, been, been talking about along the way and it's a real point of difference with Martin Senior College and other, and other you know, schools and the likes. What we do is we are in that space really between a university, a TAFE or a workplace environment and a school. And it's a tricky balance which we both have to be part of. Tricky balance because we still have, yeah, this is pretty warm, we still have uh, duty of care, and in many cases, a clear parental involvement, and in other cases, uh, autonomy, and where you're working on your own totally. But we still have that balance, and that balance is something we have to actually understand with each other. And we, um, you know, has been repeated in lots of different ways, but it, it all starts and stops here. If we get our understanding together, it will all work. I will pick up on a, on a, on a few things um, in particular. Um, for example, 
We talk about high expectations. We have high expectations and um, your progress will be carefully monitored and there'll be points of intervention along the way. I mean, I'm assuming you all know later in this term there'll be um, uh, a student report. That report's available online to parents and students where those arrangements have been placed. So that's last week of the term, parent-teacher interview that week. So they're sort of normal things. Next week, um, we'll be meeting parents um, uh, around uh, here in the, the new building area um, on Thursday. So, um, and that's where we'll be sharing some of this as well with, uh, with the parents. Um, um, also, interestingly, along the way, we have a checkpoint. And we know that around about week five, week six is where it gets tough. This is week three. Um, Nobody's starting to, there's reality starting to click in. We know that it's around right about week five, week six, that things accumulate, the novelty's starting to wear off, now you actually move into that zone where you actually have to get things done. And sometimes things start to slip behind. We have a meeting, as in staff will, will actually be saying, well, how is every one of these students tracking, and are there things that we have to monitor more carefully? Much more about that later, later from Mandy, and I promise I won't talk for too much longer, Mandy. Uh, high expectations, though, we do have, um, uh, excellent record with results and the like, but we actually offer lots of other things as well. You know, last year our stage two results were super. 38% of stage twos got an A in their grades. 61 students got an A plus. Um, so those things are available and possible at moment. Also are those areas where you've actually got different sorts of goals. So um, we do have those high expectations though, and don't, uh, uh, you have that these areas here is a commitment to these things. Part of that is regular attendance, we know that. Um, and also part of that attendance is communication um, along the way. So the teacher should be communicating with every student, every lesson. In other words, saying hello to you, finding out your name, using an interaction. You though also must maintain communication for this to work. For example, if you're unable to attend a lesson, school doesn't stop, it doesn't disappear, a, your learning can continue. B, you must communicate that attendance. And there's mechanisms which you would have been talked about um, with people along the way. Um, some other areas, non-scheduled lesson time. Um, you have a class lesson two, you don't have a class lesson three. You know that that's an opportunity to do various things at the college. Non-scheduled time can be go to the library, there's tutorial support, there's things available for you to do. But also, the senior college arrangement it's an opportunity for you to not have to be here until 3.30. And likewise, with those other non-scheduled times, there's, that's where you're going to make wise choices and decisions. Um, part of that, if you're a smoker, which we don't condone at all, there's no smoking on site, government site, nor the boundary. We know that that's a fact, black, white, done, dusted. But also out of respect to our neighbours and the likes, we don't condone smoking in and around the school perimeters and the likes. So, you shouldn't hang around in a group around someone's fence who's a neighbour who have got really good communications with. So be thoughtful of those things. If you're, if you're a driver, um, you know where you park your cars. That's on this side of the college, um, not along uh, the car parks in the college here. There are roadside parks there. But also, with your car here, doesn't mean you go back to your car and hang around your car. No one wants someone hanging around their car at lunch, recess or whatever time. So even though it's your car, that's not the place you start, it's not your safety zone. Don't hang around your car. It's got a whole range of reasons why you can think through why you shouldn't hang around your car. They're just basic things that like all schools have, we still have those sorts of basic understandings of how we go about things. Um, so we are very much part of a community. Um, I could talk about some other aspects here but I won't dwell because this is clearly going to be um, part of what you're going to be hearing about and you already know a lot about um, so in closing, as I started, I'm impressed and we're impressed by your plans and your reasons for being here. We know there's going to be some challenges along the way and we're prepared to work with you through those challenges. And basically, I really do wish you all the very best um, uh, for a successful year this year. So, Thank you so much, Stephen. That's wonderful. We're next going to hear from Simon. 
Um, and Simon Critchley is involved as an assistant principal in the systems management and he can explain much better than I can. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm mainly looking at the technological side of the school. Um, most of you have seen that we've undergone some redevelopment with new classrooms on the ground floor that has new technologies available in that. Encouraging you all, if you have a laptop computer, to bring it along and um, that way you can continue what you do at home with what you do at work. But just some of the systems that are here really to support you with your education. I always uh, use the Martin homepage as, uh, as my launch pad. And the first one I'm going to look at is DayMap. Some of you have used DayMap as a, as a learner management system. So when you log in, there's a number of things to do with messages. So we use it for, uh, for bulletin notices, uh, soon to use it for assessment, but in particular your day plan. And so if you look at your diary down the side, it at least tells you what lessons you have uh, and where those lessons have. Uh, there's some indicators, so this wonderful student has 100% uh, attendance. That colour changes as your attendance goes down. And we know that uh, the more you attend your lessons, the more you're connected with other students and your teachers, the more successful you're likely to be. So this is a bit like a traffic light to help you. You can see there's a number of messages that are there, so if you want to keep in contact with what's happening around the school, you can. Uh, also, when you actually look at a timetable, it's just another view, but you can see alongside of Monday and Tuesday there are blue ticks. So that indicates that you are you are present on those days. If you see uh, a, a red cross, either you are unexplained and absent, or maybe the teacher made a, a clerical error in marking the role. It's up to you to meet with your teacher and just say, oh, by the way, I was in class on that day. Do you remember? We were talking about so and so. And just get that attendance fixed up. That uh, attendance does come out on your report, and, and it's, it's like most things, as Stephen said, if you know you're going to be away, uh, let your, your teachers know beforehand. So most of what you need is there. That's available 24-7. It's, it's a website, so therefore you can access it on your phone, you can access it on your tablet, and you can access it from home. Coming back to <coughs> the home page again, another program we use for learning this time is the Moodle. Uh, and again, using your same username and login, will access you to the home page. On the right hand side you can see there's a button called My Courses and when you click on that any courses that you have been enrolled in should appear on that list. And your teachers are going to put lots of resources on there. And the whole idea is if you do happen to be away for a day or two, you don't stop learning. Yes, you might feel like crap in the morning and not feel like coming to school or whatever, but by midday you might be feeling better and think, well I missed out on a great lesson how do I find out what I, uh, what I missed? And you, uh, the, your teacher may have emailed you, maybe on Daymap, or you might know that there's a, a, a YouTube clip to look at, so you go into Child Studies and you can actually sum it, see some of your resources there. So this is all about your learning and the materials. Back to the <coughs> home page, um, online email access. Now, in, inside the college you can access your emails through Microsoft Outlook, but of course, if you happen to be in a cafe, I don't know why you would choose looking at email over a uh, cappuccino, but anyway, you can at least log in and you can uh, see what emails you get 24-7 anywhere where you have internet access. The last one I just want to point you to is this online file access. Let's say you were doing some work at, uh, at school, you saved it in your H drive and you thought, oh damn, I can't get to it. Yes, you can, by clicking on online file access, you come to a program called Fileway, you put in your same uh, username and password, and <coughs> as you would see with Windows Explorer, there's all your folders. I just called this student's folder student, but double clicking on that, would, they would have access to all of, their, uh, all of the files. If the teacher said to you, um, oh, there was something in, in S drive, the student drive, I forget where it is, student resources, you can access that uh, from home, download it, and you don't stop your learning just because you're not here at Martin. Now, <coughs> there is off the, the main page again, a little video. It's a seven minute video that uh, I encourage you to look at at your leisure. Uh, that talks about those different processes. So I just wanted to introduce that you've got so many technological options um, to help you be engaged with your learning. And if you have any difficulties, through the canteen, there's IT services, there's a team of technicians there, and they'll help you with any of your technical issues. Thanks very Excellent. much. Thank you so much, Simon. He was under strict orders. He wasn't allowed to take five minutes, and he did it. Well done. OK, the last thing we're going to hear about today, before we do move across to see our guest speakers, is about SGA. So I'd invite Marina to 
come and talk to you about what SGA is. Hi everyone. Oh, hey. oh sorry, it's all right. down there. Uh, I'm Lorena. I've um, been here for a few years now and um, I've been involved in the SGA, the Student Government Association. But I think you probably would like to hear from a student what it's all about and um, where I've got application forms here for anyone who'd like to join and that way you can actually have a say in how we do things this year. And I'd like to introduce Angus to talk to you. Hi, well, as Noreena said, I'm Angus and currently I'm the, one of the men, re returning members of the SGA. I was in it last year and I'm in it again this year. But yeah, um, as it says, basically it's a student voice for you guys, for students. So we get to decide what happens and how we want to get more funding for the school through fundraising. We decide how we want to fundraise. We want to have like a quiz night or a bake sale or whatever. Or you know, whatever we come, come up with and we get to decide the logo for the senior jumpers, which is always really, really fun because, you know, sometimes you get really shitty, you know, <laughs> student jumpers, but, you know. Um, yeah, like I said, it's just, it's more or less just having your voice, having your voice heard and, you know, being able to have a say in what goes on in the school. Really? And Angus, the school formal is for year 11s and 12s, yes, is that right? Yes, that, that is true. And you vets. Can, and and vets, vets, sorry, yes. All yes. students of mine, yeah, any, not just 12s. If you're enrolled at the school, you can come to the formal as well as the school jumpers. They're not just for year 12s. It's not like another like, uh, normal school where you only go if you're year 12. It's for anyone who's here. It's really good. Thank you very much. Thank you.